Hey, welcome back once again, all you CISSP wannabes. I am Colin Weaver. These are the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day, where I come at you each time bringing you two questions to help as you continue to prep for your CISSP exam. So, here comes question number one. You have tasked your security team with reviewing the session management features of an internal web application. My question for you is, if configured, which of these items would be considered the greatest uh, security weakness of your uh, session management configuration or settings. So go ahead and look those over, click pause if necessary, then play it again and I will walk it through. All right, answer choice number one says that sessions are tracked and managed using cookies. Uh, no, that is not the correct answer. Um, Cookies, though oftentimes given a bad name in the general press, actually serve some pretty important uses for us. And using cookies is actually going to be the more secure of the two, which I will explain here in a little bit. So let's continue on and look at the other choices because that ain't the one. The session only supports HTTPS connections. No. Um, the internet has largely shifted to being HTTPS only. Well, that is certainly not across the board a consistent statement, but more and more and more sites are using only HTTPS. But even if you were using only HTTPS, it does not necessarily mean that session information is going to be somehow protected. Uh, it just means that your data is going to be encrypted as it tr is transmitted back and forth. So it's complementary to the idea of session management, but it is certainly not um, the only thing that's going to provide for the security of session management. So we need something else because just making your stuff encrypted isn't going to be enough. All right, choice number three says that the server does not run a client-side firewall. Um, what does that have to do with session management? Um, the client-side firewall, on the, the most basic sense, is simply going to control uh, to which ports and protocols somebody can connect or which can go out from this device. So uh, even though that is certainly a worthy topic of discussion from a security perspective, it doesn't have anything to do with session management. So don't pick that answer either. That leaves us with the last choice. Sessions are managed using URL rewrites. That is the correct answer. URL rewrites are when session information are included in the URL that the user is using rather than being used or rather than being tracked in cookies. In general, there's two basic ways that sessions are managed to a web server. One is through cookies, the other is through URL rewrites. URL rewrites are considered to be significantly less secure and in general should be avoided. The reason for that is, is that the session information being in the URL is very vulnerable to exposure. What if, for instance, you were logged into a website, into this web application, and the session information was transmitted in your URL and then you copy that URL and text it or email it to somebody to say, hey, check this out. Not realizing that your session information is in the actual URL, so when that person clicks on the link, they're going into your session, which could absolutely compromise the uh, confidentiality of information that you didn't really think they were gonna have access to. You just thought you were sending them a link to a web page. Um, it could also, as another example, end up in, say, a log file. So if there's a record of the links that are being clicked on or the pages that you're visiting and that information is stored in logs somewhere, then that exposes your session information there where it could potentially be abused as well. So it's actually better for that information to be stored in a cookie um, because it's much less susceptible to compromise when stored as a cookie. So using URL rewrites is generally considered a party foul when it comes to um, session management related security. All right, let's move on. Question number two, a server admin has reported a large number and a persistent number of half open TCP connections coming from a variety of different internet IP addresses. My question for you is, which of these items or which of these answer choices is the best way for you to address the issue? Give those a look, think it over. When you think you got the right answer, click play and we can talk it through. All right, your first answer choice says that you should reconfigure the app to transmit slower connections via UDP. Uh, that statement really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, 
that's really not the way that, that things work. If you're communicating with TCP, you stick with TCP. You don't just switch back and forth between TCP and UDP. Um, so no, let's not do that. Choice number two says that you should increase the amount of RAM on the web server. Now, I'm unaware of a circumstance where a server suffered from having too much RAM, but in this particular scenario, just throwing more RAM into the machine is not going to fix your problem. Okay, the problem is, is that you have an excess of half open TCP connections for some reason, probably an attack, and just putting more RAM in the computer is not going to be the solution that fixes it. So we need something more involved than that. Choice number three says you should decrease the size of the TCP backlog queue. Well, if you are going to increase the size of the TCP backlog queue, that might be the right answer, but because it says to decrease it, then definitely not the right answer choice. A TCP backlog queue, if you're not familiar with that term, is simply the size of the queue that a particular application has for TCP connections. Okay. Now, if you exceed that, let's say that it was 1,024, if you have more than 1,024 half-open connection attempts coming in, okay, they are going to get dropped in excess of 1,024. That container for all these half-open connections is finite. If you were to increase the size of that queue, then you would be able to have more half-open connections. If, however, this was an attack, if somebody was actually doing a TCP send flood, trying to create a denial of service situation for your app, if you were to say double that queue or quadruple it or what have you, then sure, you're gonna be able to tolerate more, you know, half open connections, but if they're coming in in a sufficient quantity that they're gonna fill up the queue really regardless of how many or how big you make it, it's not gonna defend you, or it's not gonna defend you or protect you. So, just going in and saying, oh, well, let me increase the size of my backlog queue and that'll fix this sin flood attack. Even though it's technically a solution, it's really not going to be in many situations the best or the most viable solution. So I wouldn't really recommend that being the thing you're going to try and use to make, uh, make this problem go away. So definitely not uh, the answer choice that we're looking here, particularly since we're talking about decreasing it rather than increasing it. Decreasing is actually going to make the problem worse. So no. Okay, how about you install reverse path forwarding on your uh, on a router, on an internet facing router? Nope, uh, I did a question about this just the other day. Reverse path forwarding is a feature that allows you to deal with uh, say spoofed IP packets. And while these packets may very well be spoofed, uh, they're not going to typically gonna be the solution that's gonna protect you because uh, if the traffic is coming from the internet, your reverse path forwarding on an internet facing router is really gonna point to all those destinations as being reachable from the internet. Unless you're a larger enterprise that's multi-homed and have multiple different exit points out to the internet, um, which is more technical than we will even want to begin to talk about from a CISSP perspective, you don't need to uh, consider this as a solution because it's not going to protect you against this particular type of problem. That leaves us with the last choice, which is for you to go in and enable SIN flood protection on an upstream firewall. This is the best answer choice that's here. Now, if you put SIN flood protections in on an upstream firewall, what is effectively going to happen is, is the firewall is going to track how many TCP SIN requests have been sent to a particular server that's under that firewall's protection. If it exceeds a particular threshold without those connections actually being established, then the firewall is going to simply stop forwarding more TCP SIN requests into the firewall. The benefit of this is that it's going to protect the web app or the server from the SIN flood but what if legitimate connections were also in excess of the whatever the SIN flood threshold is? Let's say it's 500 or something like that. Then that means legitimate connection attempts are not getting dropped because they're in excess of the backlog queue on the server. They're getting dropped because they're in excess of the SIN flood limit that's specified on the upstream firewall. So this is not a perfect solution by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, and to some extent, you're really just kind of deferring the problem off to somebody else. Your firewall is taking a beating, your web server is okay, but if the firewall is taking a beating and everybody has to pass through that firewall in order to get to your web app, you still got a problem. But from the answer choices that are here, this is the only one that really is a valid answer choice. So um, it is the best answer. It's not a perfect answer by any stretch of the imagination. And we could go further down the rabbit hole, but we won't because this is the CISSP and we even though it gets technical from time to time, we don't want to get too technical. Um, 
And uh, but th but there's a lot more discussion that could be had, and, then, and the technical people in an organization are going to have to have a more thorough and rigorous discussion about how to mitigate these kinds of attacks. So that's your answer choice. It's the best answer choice. There you go. All right, you did it. Two more questions. Hope you like them. I'll see you next time.